with changes in your life. Today, we will be calibrating your life by embracing the change. Let's get started. Welcome. Welcome. I'm so excited you are here. And don't forget, you are also a part of this show. Leave your comments and join the conversation. We do not have a special one special guest today. We have two guests today, Monica Henderson and Natalie Clark. And we will be talking how has change help you on your entrepreneurial journey. And again, just a reminder, Mink Life community members, please respond and be the part of the conversation. So let's get motivated. No, no, no. Get motivated today with hot topics, life changes. Why is it important to embrace the change? And I will ask Monica to start this conversation. Awesome. You know, what's funny uh, is, uh, so Irina always gets the meet the co-host question and that's quite all right. Uh, because that is, that is embracing change. It is literally talking about what we are doing today, right? Um, sometimes things don't go as we planned. Right. And we kind of get in our heads and we go, oh, my gosh, I had a plan. It didn't go the way that I was supposed to go. But sometimes there are gems and jewels in that journey. And so embracing change like I'm doing right now of me not being the moderator, but having someone else sit in that seat can sometimes bring you some gems and jewels along the way. Um, I have become really comfortable with the concept of change so much so that uh, when things stay the same, I almost don't feel like I'm, like something's not right. Everything has stayed exactly the same. Uh, and that has really been beneficial to me because as the pandemic happened and things were changing, I was, I was like on my toes, ready to go. Uh, and uh, as my business needed to change to match what was happening in uh, the pandemic, I was on my toes, ready to go. Uh, and as my parenting needed to change because of life circumstances changing, I was on my toes and ready to go. And so the, my ability to not be rigid in things having to be just so and being able to go with the flow um, has really kind of helped me um, not freak out when things aren't going the way that I expected them to go. In a lot of ways, uh, the things that I, you would expect to go, I always say God plans better than I do. And so when it happens uh, that things aren't going the way that I want it to go, um, I'm like, oh, I thought I was going to go this way. And then I turn around and how it happened was way better than I originally intended it in the first place. And so it just ends up being better. So it's always been um, something that I've had to embrace in order for me to be open and ready for whatever life brings me. Thank you, Monica. Natalie, how about you? How embracing the change is helping you? Okay, well, being an entrepreneur since 2005, I've had about eight different businesses and they've all been completely different and yet they've all had a common thread. The common thread being me. But it has had different places. There have been different suppliers, suppliers that have changed their minds about supplying me. So I've had to pivot my business and come up with new supply, new products, new business lines. And in my entrepreneurial journey as a life coach and awakening guide, I've also had to be open to change because where um, I originally was a business consultant and life coach, I thought that that was what my business would look like, that I would have lots of VA projects and I would also be coaching one-on-ones. However, being open to change, it has been a good thing because it turns out that that was not what my business looked like over the last six to eight months. It changed completely. 
it had a completely different base. My, my, my joint, joint venture partners, partners have pivoted, pivoted me to do completely, completely different things. things. Now, now I'm speaking, speaking. I'm, I'm holding online, online energy retreats. That, that looks nothing like, like business consulting, virtual assistant projects, and head life coach, coach counseling. counseling. So, so being open to change is something that's important because your business grows and evolves as you grow and evolve. And, and as the influences that, that come into your life change um, and to differ. Because even your relationships, they may change while you're busy on your entrepreneurship journey, and that will change how you can deliver your services. You may not necessarily, as Monica said, be able to do your one-on-ones face-to-face. COVID changed, that made us have to be able to go online and be comfortable doing videos and being face-to-face with people on a camera, which is something we weren't necessarily comfortable with back at the beginning of COVID. So, so, yes, being open, open to embracing change has been something that has been very important in order for my business to get to where it is today. Thank you. Thank you. This is so much truth. And we, during the COVID, we've heard so many stories, and I personally have heard so many stories about people who were sticking to the traditional way of them handling the business, and they could not move forward because the situation changes about around us and sometimes it changes for better sometimes it changes not for so good but <laughs> but being flexible and this is something that i am constantly talking about being flexible and being able to see the good and benefits in those changes is something that is really helping us to stay afloat to keep moving forward and uh changing the world around us so that's my take on that flexibility is very important when we are embracing the change right so moving forward we are must stay inspired and we need to well the question is how does a lack of embracing the change affects how the way we move through life and business and i will be just moving back and forth so if natalie was the second one to answer now natalie will answer the first okay Okay, so the the lack of embracing embracing change affects affects your business business because because If you you are not open open to change, change, you may end up closing your doors. Because we initially, for instance, think we know what our clients want. Because we've decided what it is we're servicing our clients with. However, when your client walks in the door, you say that you're going to handle only this aspect of virtual assistant work, for example. However, when your client walks in the door, that is absolutely nothing like what they need help with. Are you, Are you going, going to be open, open to helping them with, with what it is that they need help with? Are you, Are you going, going to be willing, willing to upskill yourself if you are not able to provide that service right now because you haven't got the skills? These are important because that client's going to turn around and walk out the door. So is the paycheck. And if you're not interested in expanding, going with the flow, embracing the change and being open, to to seeing what it is that your client client truly needs and truly wants, you're you're going going to be trying to serve for something that for all intents and purposes is not actually required by anybody in the market. So you may be running around looking for a client that's your avatar, wanting to service them with what you believe they need. And there isn't one avatar out there that actually needs what it is you're trying to force down their throat. So that's been my current perspective on the projects that I have on the table with regards to coaching, counseling, working with joint venture partners. If you're not open to embracing the change that you can actually be a good power partner or a good coach or come across with the events in a format that your clients are looking for, you're going to end up with problems where you end up closing your doors, as I say, because there's no one to service. You're not open to the change. And you're not open to provide the service that's needed. Thank you, Natalie. I actually like it. If you are not open, you are actually closing, right? So this is just take out all the other words. If you're not open, you're closing. 
and uh, being open to the change is really helping us to stay open. Monica, please join. Yeah, so, you know, the conversation today about changing your life, I, I love what Natalie said about like being able to pivot and change in your business. And that is so incredibly important. And next week, we're going to talk a lot more about that, uh, about the, the changing in your business. Um, but what we forget sometimes is when we have changes in our business, it also requires us to change our lifestyle along with that. Uh, and um, most of us have been pushed by the pain of our business has changed. And so now my life has to work around how my business has changed. And recently I have had to, I've had life change on me and I've had to change how my business was, how I do my business so that I can make sure that I support the people who I'm now responsible for supporting in my life uh, in a more profound way. And in doing that, I realized that sometimes we do need to take a moment and step back and say, wait a minute, the whole reason why I do my business and the whole reason why I have this way of providing income and support for my family is so that I can enjoy the life that I am building. And if we are thinking about like, oh, well, I can't do that because of work or I can't do that because of business or I can't support the people who I am have vowed to support or nurture or take care of or be in commune with, if I can't support them because I have to work, then we have the cart before the horse. The cart itself is what we are building. We are building a lifestyle to support who we are. We are building a lifestyle to be able to love the ones that we love, the places that we go and that we live in, and all of those things in our lives are actually the whole reason why we do something for work. And so I almost kind of want to say we should change that perspective for a second and say, wait a minute, how can I fit serving other people where I get an energy exchange of money back to me in a way that supports the best life that I want to live? We always talk about living healthy, wealthy, and fulfilled. And I think the fulfilled and the healthy come from when we turn, we put the cart where it belongs and the horse where it belongs. This lifestyle I want to live is the cart, the horse that's going to get me where I got to go is the business. Right. And we do need to feed and make sure that the horse stays alive. And that that is very important. That's why we do our work every day. But the cart itself has all of the things that we love in it. And if we are ditching the cart and getting on that horse and just riding the horse, well, when it's time to, you know, pop that tent up and enjoy some time off, you don't have it. You left it behind. It was wherever you un unhook that cart, it's left there. And so if I could help us think about changing our lives, right? And think about like, by taking that time to make sure that our cart is fully stocked and amazing and worth the horse pushing or pulling, I should say, then we will actually be able to then change our lives for the better, enjoy our lives and really kind of be able to embrace the changes that come along with it. That horse may run into some rocky patches and that ride on that on that cart might be a little rough, right? But if we are really kind of thinking of it in that way, where the lifestyle we want is is the cart and the the, the business is the the horse, no matter what we encounter, it will be in the right direction, in the right alignment, and we will be able to have that undercurrent of joy that we live with when things are just so. Thank you, Monica. And actually, what you were talking about, this is, this is uh, connecting business and life together. We cannot sustain our business journey without taking care of our life, lifestyle, and vice versa. And sometimes we see how people, with the changes that the life presented like to the whole world in the last couple of years, uh, when people started focusing too much on one thing, the other thing started immediately sinking, and that brought a lot of uh, not very, very pleasant and very productive 
situation. So embracing the change in life and in business at the same time, absolutely. And if we don't embrace that, if we stay close to the change, we are yeah. we, we're closing everything else too. All right. Uh, so motivated, inspired networking. Who should you ask for help when you are trying to improve in embracing change? Monica, you are on a roll. Please do that. That way. You should ask people like Irina Sturunina, who helps you reprioritize your health. Because without your health, you have no wealth. Now, I have known Irina for two years. And if I could pull any words out of her head <laughs> or any words out of her mouth that she has said over the years, it's just that without your health, there is no wealth, right? Um, and uh, those of you who are rap fans, Jay-Z said the same thing. You need a doctor, a lawyer, uh, and an accountant. Those are the three most important people in your life. Uh, and so people like Irina is going to be absolutely necessary. Uh, people like Natalie, who can help you really understand that mind soul connection and provides opportunities and space to be able to get you in that way um, so that they are in true alignment from top to bottom and really being able to live who you really are. Uh, you want to know people like that. You want to have those people in your corner. Uh, you want to have really good friends like Peggy <laughs> because I can't tell you with all the things that were happening this year, I've had so many personal, personal, just like waves, just hitting over and over and over again. Having someone like Peggy MacArthur in my corner as my friend and just being like, girl, it's okay, Rub, rubbing my back and being like, it's okay, it's okay, you got this, you're amazing. People like that help you stay connected to the undercurrent of joy. Uh, and so the long answer shortened is you got to have someone who is looking out for your health because Irina will tell me if I don't have enough steps in on a regular basis. Uh, and uh, Natalie will make sure that we are, I am always connected into my, to my soul uh, and having a friend who understands how my mind works and can, and can speak to when I need to be refortified in that space, right? Someone for the mind, someone for the body and someone for the soul. That would be the long story short. Thank you, Monica. Natalie, what do you have to add to this very full answer? <laughs> yeah, I would say that almost leaves you with no things to say, but funny enough, being one of many words, I will have something to say. <laughs> um, it really does come down to your tribe, your support system. And I believe really a business support system as much as a personal support system. You know, I being a workaholic, spending many, many hours behind my desk trying to face the financial angle, um, ended up with exactly what Monica described earlier, and that was that I put my time on Instead of spending time with him when he left, I had not built up that foundation. I had been focusing on the business, not home. And that balance steals time from you. You can never get that time back. Your children grow up, they move out. And the day they move out is a very big awakening moment. That's when you see just how much time you actually plummeted down the drain, focusing on the wrong thing. So that's why I have my genius activator, because she reminds me to keep on top of my game. And personally, taking the time and trouble to look at my health, like you're in it. Because if you don't focus on your self-care and how much time you spend giving yourself downtime, that business of yours is not going to work very well. You're going to be overwhelmed. You're going to drop the wall. You're not going to be giving your clients what they truly need. You're not going to be there when your power partner needs you. You're going to be on the wrong side of the page. So... It is imperative that you surround yourself with the right support system. When they say the six people that surround you define you, 
it is true. I have proved that to myself in the last eight years. Because who I surrounded myself with before didn't make me play big. They helped me hide. Now Ooh. I have there's no hiding. It's full out or don't bother. Wow. The the people who were surrounding me didn't let didn't make me play full, but they they helped me hide. Oh my gosh, that is a statement. I was just thinking about all the people who let me hide before, just by you saying that. Wow, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. And I wanted to add something to those, because I don't have much to add. Uh, I agree with both of <laughs> Natalie and Monica, but there is one thing that uh, we uh, sometimes kind of overlooking. We can surround ourselves with the wonderful people, supporting people who are really ready to encourage you, or people who are ready to uh, answer questions and do some work for you to help you to do what you are doing the best, right? But unfortunately, we as human, we still did not master that mind reading thing. So asking for help, you know, even you are surrounded by genius what? people. Yes, I know, Monica. <laughs> you mean we have to ask for help? People don't just throw themselves at us? Just, uh, oh, I can really use this, and it just pops in? We have to ask? <laughs> yes, that's something that we, me, forget to do. And uh, it's actually, as always, Monica is putting me on the spot. And the conversation at the time when it's needed, the, the most for me at the moment so, <laughs> so we are we as, as 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 you said as monica said as natalie said we need to make sure that people around us the ones who our support and the you know genius in their in their area but and eliminate the ones who really helping us to to stay below the radar but yeah. to ask those and indicate what exactly help uh, you are looking for is also very important. As a, uh, someone I know used to say, help is important in a way and shape how it was asked for. So when you're asking for help with your health and somebody is saying, and look, and your business is not doing well, let me tell you this and help you with that. This is not what you're asking about. You're asking, and so those people who are around you, they must be able to hear what you're asking about and hear you, not focusing on them. Like, I have my expertise and let me throw it at you. <laughs> <laughs> and you will benefit. I know you will benefit. You'll thank me later. But at this moment, I personally need someone to help me to relax because this is something that I am I'm very tense, for example. And I, I cannot even understand what you're talking about because my mind is not there. So yeah. this is something that's that- a, uh, That's an amazing point, actually. You guys are, again, this is what I do when I'm like not on the couch with you guys. And I'm like, oh, that's good, right? Like, but I'm on the couch with you today. So I get to, I get to chime in directly and, and say that that point is absolutely amazing. If I were like on my phone, I would have been over here doing this like, but that would be rude because you can see me. So I'm going to just give you my comment out loud. The help comes back to you in the way that you ask for it. I think that is one of the most important things that you said in all of what you said, because I think that's where we always say people fail us. I asked for help and they didn't come through or they weren't able to help me in the way that I wanted to be helped. And I think we're bad at asking for help in the first place. And then we're really bad at being very specific about how, what kind of help we need and in what ways people can help us. What are all the acceptable, accept, acceptable, woo, using words today, acceptable ways that people can help you? Because sometimes the way we ask someone, ooh, I, I, that's not my specialty. I, I can't do that. But what I can do is this, that, or the other. And I think sometimes because we aren't 
comfortable with change or flexible, like how um, Irina was saying earlier, when we're asking for help, well, I, I just need someone to do this, this, and this, and then I'll be fine. And there are probably other ways that people can help you get the same objective without it being so rigid as well. So everything, I mean, you just took my whole brain into a whole new, a whole new section. <laughs> Thank you, Irina, oh, for that, for that piece. But like, you know, I don't know, what do you guys think? I think we might be asking for help wrong. Sometimes we do. Sometimes yeah, we do. Yeah, I think sometimes we get a little bit emotional. For instance, when you want to ask for help, it's, it's difficult. I don't know if you offer, but I'm not going to ask. And I do need to ask for help, and it's a desperate thing. Obviously, it's desperate if I'm going to ask. So my emotions are too high. So I'm obviously yeah. not going to come across this place. We are right back to energyhealing.com. <laughs> there you go. Like, that's that's 100% accurate. I and I am guilty. Guilty is charged. I am that person to wait until the very last minute to ask for help from other people. Last minute. There's probably other people who are the same way. Last minute. And then by the time I ask for the last minute ask help, I'm like, <laughs> about asking it. <laughs> I um, people are less receptive to help you when you're that way. It's, it's you know, uh, attracting flies with honey instead of vinegar kind of a thing, kind of moment. Uh, and then also, uh, I have less options on how I can be supported or helped at that point, right? Like at that point, there's really only one way I can get out of this situation, right? And so there are no, there's no time for us to brainstorm. We have to act now. And I think that's too late to act. Right. That's like we've missed we've missed the part where there were like a lot of other choices. And now the universe is shoving us down one hole like, OK, now you just got to go. This is the only way now because you you decided that you don't want to ask for help early. Right. And so, gosh, y'all preaching wow. to me today. I'm here on the couch getting all all of my good. Thank you. Thank you. So. Yeah. Right. Thank Anna. you, Monica. Thank you, Natalie. And we are moving to our fourth point, gaining knowledge. Final thought. What is your final tip for growing in this embracing change discussion? Mm -hmm. area? And since who I, I, I missed. OK, Monica was first last time. So Natalie starts. <laughs> OK, so. Not, Not that, that I've got this right, right yet myself, myself but as my final tip, be open um, to forgive yourself um, if you don't embrace change and you bump your head, um, like we have just discussed is possible in a number of ways. Um, just be forgiving of yourself and be open to listening, getting counsel, getting advice and working through it so that next time you can embrace the change. Thank you, Natalie. Monica, what will you say? I was hoping her answer was longer so I could have more time to think about, about my final <laughs> tip. <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, so my final tip for embracing change is realizing that everything that you ever loved about life came from a major change in your life. So if you think about uh, if you're a parent, you had to completely uproot your life for these babies that may bring you joy. Yes, you want to punch them in the face sometimes and kiss them at exactly the same time, but the joy that comes from them being in your life is absolutely worth all of that. And it came from a disruption in the status quo of how you were doing everything in your life. Uh, probably your significant others, uh, if you, you know, are in a romantic partnership, that came out of a change. You were single and now you're not, right? Uh, the, the ability to have a new friend in your life in the value that they bring to you, that came from a change. You did something slightly different that just so happened to have you meet someone else, and then you started hanging out with them as opposed to what you were doing before you were hanging out with them, and that was a change. So I think maybe not thinking of change as bad, 
right? Uh, but that change gives you new opportunities and new um, ways to be able to kind of interact with the world and new people. Um, and it only comes from change. You can't do exactly the same thing and have these new wonderful experiences pop up in your life. You have to actually have a change in your life. So uh, anytime you're getting scared about a new change and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I can't, I, everything needs to stay exactly the same. Remember all of those times where things changed and brought you something the most amazing person or the most amazing experience because you did something a little different than what was the status quo for your life before. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, Natalie. Um, to me, I just I wanted also to to add five five cents to to this conversation about embracing the change. Uh, the very important thing that sometimes people we keep kind of like overlooking, and I see it in my community, this diabetes one on one community, people re recognize we re realize that the change is needed and instead of looking forward to the bet better things good things that this change can bring to us we are grieving the things that we used to and this is something that we really sometimes really need to kind of like stop breathe and think about okay that was in the past something new is coming what good this new is bringing to us and i really this is something that we all myself included uh, forgetting to think about but being able to stop breathe and think what good is coming from this is really focusing us on doing good and getting better rather than being said about the fact that it's now different uh, my five cents and this is the end of this uh get motivated stay inspired uh keep networking gay knowledge block and now it's time for announcement and i have the soloist to perform <laughs> the announcement song announcements 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 <laughs> Natalie. I love that y'all love that because it is so cheesy. <laughs> but apparently it brings you joy. So I'm happy to bring you that kind of joy. Well, this is already a signature song and nobody is attempting to, to do better because, <laughs> they, you know, you reached such a high uh, <laughs> standard in, in this in this performance that we just like, I wish Monica was here and Today, my wish came true. You are here to do that. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I'm a regular Beyonce around these parts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Next thing you know, I'm going to be wearing a leotard and some thigh high boots and having a fan like Amy Lancey blowing yeah. my hair yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Announcements, announcements. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's start with Natalie. What will be what's new is coming up in your life and in the life that you surrounded okay, okay so i'm, I'm very, very excited, excited because, because we are having our fourth hummingbird, hummingbird awakening retreat next week on the 28th three hours of the best energy healers on the group. so if you're a healer somebody in the front line or somebody who's supporting people it tends to get a little bit overwhelming sometimes we forget to take time out for ourselves as we've mentioned today and we become drained exhausted and our lives so ignite your inner song and come and join us for three hours of relaxation take a nice deep breath and find yourself thank you Thank you, Natalie. I don't even know, Monica, which way we should go. Me first or you first? What would you rather have? Me first. Okay. <laughs> I have an announcement <laughs> to make. We have in our community the, the next 
also the fourth global virtual health fair coming up on the 30th of July, it's Saturday. And this is a six hours event and it will go live on Facebook. So you don't need to log into anything. You don't need to uh, set the password. The only thing that is required from you is to somehow get connected to me so you will know your Facebook will let you know when I am going live. And we start at 10 a.m. Eastern time and it will go all the way through the 4 p.m. And I hope everybody who is interested about learning about diabetes or knows about someone and you could send someone to our health fair because we have doctors, we have practitioners, we have nutritionists we have different uh experts from different areas of expertise in health talking about how diabetes is affecting our lives how diabetes can be handled how diabetes can be avoided and uh because this is really the secret pandemic that is going on around the globe i feel this is something that we all need to be aware and educated on join us it's july 30th 10 to 4 p.m. Eastern time. Follow me on the Facebook anywhere. I have several places where I am there. Uh, just type Irina Strunina and uh, you'll find the link to those, um, not the link, but the, the Facebook will, will show you the when we go live. Monica. I went ahead and just opted to being the last person to go because I am founder and creator of Mink Life Motivation, and we have so much happening. First of all, I'm going to be in Scotland next week, and I'll be speaking at the Hard Rock in Glasgow. Uh, and so look for uh, comments later about how you can get cooked up to come and see me in person. My first in-person speaking gig, so excited. And it just so happens to be in Scotland. So if you are going to be in Scotland, in Glasgow on Tuesday, you got two things you can do. You can come and hang out with me and you can come and hang out with my husband because it's his birthday party and it's a speaking gig for me, 30 minute conversation about how you can activate your zone of genius to create extinction level impact in the world. You're probably not gonna wanna miss that. Uh, it's the first time I'm doing that talk. Uh, so it's bound to have stuff that no one else will get to hear. So you want it, you want to be in on that. Uh, the other thing is we have built all of this for you, you as a community, uh, we would love for you to join us. And I am going to put up a graphic. Here's what it is. There are two parts to our community. We have the mingle online community. Uh, where we do community communications. It's a private app. You can watch videos in the knowledge library of all of the different people in our community, direct message, uh, and uh, the community members, uh, and you can ask for help, and you can even share your expertise. Uh, we love, love, love supporting each other. I don't know if you noticed that about us. Uh, we talk about each other all the time. And so if you wanna be a part of the in crowd, you wanna hang out with the cool kids in the private app, you have to join the Mingle community. Uh, the other part that comes with the Mingle community membership is that you get to do a smarter way to get better results. That's right. We have the Minkubator. It is our uh, life and business incubator. Uh, it is a co-working space that is open daily to help you get ish done. I'm trying to be better when not cussing on online. On, online so get ish done, right? Really get it done. Uh, we have we support each other through it. You can um, be in with a trainer or you can work with community members or co-workers. And we do all of the things that coaches don't necessarily do, like handhold you through that moment when you want to throw your computer across the room because you can't figure out how that one box gets checked on the app. That is what we do in there. Also, when you just need someone to, to hear you, your pitch and make you and, and you can ask them, do I sound like an idiot? No. Awesome. You need that encouragement. You want to come and hang out with us in the Minkubator. Uh, and that is happening six days a week. Uh, and you'll have to check your local listings. Just playing. You'll have to actually check the website to see the times that we are, are, are working in your area. Uh, and last but not least, we are so excited because if you've not experienced the next global virtual conference, this next phase is all about being the change maker. Uh, we are no longer talking about building businesses for the sake of building businesses, but 
uh, as you can, as if you haven't heard, um, apparently uh, the UK is on fire and uh, runways are melting. So we got to do something about the things that are happening in our world, not just make money, but make money with a cause. And so if you are a change maker and you want to be surrounded by other change makers and you want to get together to hear 24 panels, six reflective workshops, 24 breakout sessions, global networking community that share their experiences and their expertise. And you want to share your experience and expertise, you need to come and hang out with us at the next global virtual conference. If you want to be a speaker, it's not too late. Join the community. We'll put you on the roster. Uh, all of those things are part of how we connect our community members to each other and how we connect to the world. If you want to be on this live show, also join the community or come and hang out with us uh, as a guest by going to Mink Life Motivation Live. All of these things we have built so that we can collaborate, that we can create community, and so that ultimately we can help each other as we help our clients get motivated, stay inspired, keep networking, gain knowledge so that every person can live their birthright to live a life that's designed by them, for them, healthy, wealthy, and fulfilled. And if you have any interest in learning any, about any of this, feel free to go to minklifemotivation.com uh, and all the information is there, or Mink Life University, or just connect directly with me, Monica Henderson, at monicamhenderson.com and get on my calendar. All of those ways we can come together to support each other as we change the world together. So that's why I went last because long-winded, I'm exhausted. <laughs> Thank you, Monica. Thank you, Monica. <laughs> Thank you, Natalie. And I had fun. Uh, Me started, too. Yeah, this started. Peggy did little... too. I'm going to tell on her. Peggy's right over here, and I was laughing earlier because Peggy was making faces. Okay. Because she's having a good time too. The same. Camera carries on like that in the background. <laughs> <laughs> she'll she'll be carrying on like that next week. Well. Yeah. Oh, one more announcement. I forgot. Tomorrow. Join me and Natalie at uh, at 2 p.m. Pacific time because we're going to be maximizing your business and we're going to be talking all about how that change it really affects you in business and how all the ways that we need to kind of change in that way. So uh, I can't wait to keep having the conversation with Natalie tomorrow. Excellent. Thank I think that's you. It. I'm, I'm done. You didn't forget about this one. <laughs> Well, this is wrapping up our uh, conversation about the change, embracing the change. And I hope that anybody who will be watching it later will hit the replay, hashtag replay, and uh, make their comments if they didn't have a chance to do it right now. This is Mink Life Motivation live show. <laughs>